Hey, this is Jonathan Gillum. I'm about to start the show, and I want to give you your tasking for today, and that is, if you're conservative, go ask somebody that you know that's liberal to explain why they feel the way that they feel. And if you're liberal, go ask the same thing from a conservative. Remember, forget about Republican and Democrat. Find somebody who is slow to change, somebody that is not looking for revolution, somebody who wants realistic solutions and ask them what they feel. And if you're, if you feel the other way, if you feel like there should be revolution or you feel like there's major injustice in the world, ask the other person that's liberal and conservative talking. I don't think you're going to see eye to eye, but at least you'll be able to see where the other person's coming from. That's basically all we have right now. Anyway, let's start the show. This is Jonathan Gillum back on the Experts Podcast. The truth has arrived. And I, I skipped Wednesday because I was out uh, spreading the truth. I went to the incredible patio pizza. If you ever get a chance to go out there and it's on Long Island. And uh, the story behind it uh, with the pizza place is that, you know, the guy that owns it, his name is Guy. He's an amazing guy. And he, he is, um, he really is a patriot. And, and getting to spend some time with him last night and, and hear about this story was pretty phenomenal because I, I really was not familiar when I got out there. I wasn't familiar with the story about exactly what had happened. I knew that uh, the president had mentioned uh, the pizza, uh, the pizzeria before and, um, but I didn't know uh, the exact story, but it's in St. James out on Long Island. And apparently what happened was that he had a, uh, uh, a Trump flag uh, that uh, MAGA flag. And he had that on the back of the, uh, of where the restaurant is. And he, he took it away from the front because they were worried about somebody doing something. So he put it in the back and evidently some woman saw it. Uh, that was a, uh, I, I guess, a customer. I don't know if she's a regular customer, but she uh, went in and told them that she wasn't going to do business with him anymore because of the flag, that she was offended by it. She was hurt. So then she goes on to Facebook and uh, on this mother's page where she was an administrator for something about women out there on Long Island or whatever it was. And so um, she soon stirred up a hornet's nest and there was this big debate going back and forth on the Facebook page. It was a mom centric Facebook page and, uh, guy, um, and you say his last name, Caligiuri, guy Caligiuri. That's how you say his last name. I, I'm, you know, I'm not the best with names and everybody that knows me. So, uh, Ka guy Caligiuri, who owns the patios pizza did not start this in any way, shape or form. He didn't have anything to do with it. And this, so this woman goes on to the Facebook page and she uh, basically tries to start up the cancel culture saying that she's not going to eat there anymore, uh, that she's not going to do business anymore and kind of tries to rustle up people so that they will cancel that pizza place out. And it has the opposite effect. It goes gangbusters where the, to the point now where every Wednesday it's basically a, a, a mini Trump rally. And so that's why I went out there. I wanted to see what it was all about. And uh, luckily uh, there were there were quite a few people who knew where, who I was when I got out there, and they wanted me to say a few words. They'd seen some of my speeches and knew me from the radio and and TV, and so it turned out to be an amazing event. And uh, there, you know, several hundred people out there. He's really his business has gone crazy. It's gone up over a hundred percent since this is happening. And the president tweeted out in support of him. That's what really took it to another level. What's interesting about it, though, and I'm going to have Guy on this 
uh, show. Um, eventually, I'm gonna go back out there and do a book signing. I did. We auctioned off a book last night, for, and uh, he's gonna donate the money to Tunnel to Towers, um, 140 bucks for one book, and that was a spontaneous thing that's gonna go to Tunnel to Towers. And I thought that was pretty amazing for the uh, Air Force veteran that that uh, bought the book, and I got to sign a few books for some other people out there. And so, the interesting thing about it was I came back home, and again, I said, you know, from the beginning, of this, I, I was not really. Uh, fully aware of the story. I didn't know exactly how, it, what had actually happened. But after listening to them tell me the story last night, uh, it really made total sense because this, this stuff goes on constantly. And uh, this cancel culture is really not really cancel culture. It's not a cultural thing. This is a, uh, a tactic to put people in fear of saying what they want to say or having businesses that express what they want to express. I mean, if you go out there and you put a flag out there um, that is uh, pro-gay, for instance, um, and somebody tries to come and boycott you because your business is pro-gay, you're going to get crushed for trying to boycott that, right? Now, if, if you put up something about Trump, you're going to get destroyed in some places. So it, it really is a leftist tactic to try and get uh, people and their businesses and uh, anybody who supports the president to j just get them hammered and get them out of the way. When I went and looked at online, and the first uh, the first article that it came up was from Business Insider, right? Now, listen, folks, I spend a lot of time looking at what's going on in the news and skimming through these articles. And I'm here to tell you, it is. I've been doing this for years like going on five years now and i have never ever ever seen what is going on now to the extent it's happening where every single story i read it doesn't matter if it's at fox news business insider the hill has become the worst leftist everything is written not just with a left slant it is written as though an activist wrote it a leftist activist wrote it and this article was nothing short of that it, it, this article basically the way it was written by a business insider um let's see who's the person that wrote it here i'm not gonna say their name i don't want to i don't want to give them any props um but they wrote it as though uh it, it was the it was guy's fault and the president was stupid for for tweeting about it uh, you know, guy went on and, and did a, an interview on um, Stuart Varney's show on Fox Business, and that kind of helped it take off a little bit. And then the president saw that and he tweeted about it. But this story is written, and this is where, you know, guy's story is very important because what it shows you is if you stand up to the to these people uh, and you just wade through the storm, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And that's what they did. And God bless them with a tremendous amount of business now. But when you, I think the story behind this, again, I'm always trying to get to these stories is that when I go and I read these articles about it, they are written in such a way that make it look like the woman who came in there and started all this is a saint. And the very end of the, of the, of the, the article where they had to, um, where they quoted her, the, this woman who they do not name, um, she says, we have, quote, 150,000 Americans dead from coronavirus, she said. Kids are still locked in cages, and yet we focus on something so silly as a pizza parlor. I think he has better things he, that he could do, probably be spending his time on. She's talking about President Trump. You see, what this idiot doesn't realize is that 150,000 people dead. Over half of those are dead because of leftist governors who put COVID positive patients into these elderly clinics. That's the first thing she doesn't even realize, right? I'm sure she thinks such as Joe Biden's going to be using now, he's going to be using this in his campaign is that president uh, is responsible for the, for every, every single, there's now over 160,000 people dead. He's, he's responsible for every single one and he's going to blame them. He's going to blame the president and the CDC for ha making the governors put people that are positive into these elderly clinics. And that's just absolutely not true. 
But that's what Joe Biden's going to say. And that's what Cuomo and many of the other governors have said, that that was mandated. It was never mandated by the federal government. It was mandated by these governors, right? So she doesn't know. This is the same idiot that came up there and started this with the pizzeria, which has worked out great for him and not so well for her. She says kids are still locked in cages. None of these people that are talking about these kids in cages understand the reality of what's going on down there at the border. They, they just clearly skip over the statistics about all of these children being brought in by people that are not family members, these children that are being brought in and trafficked through there, the, these people that are bringing them in that are criminals themselves, and the ones that are families that are trying to come over, that it's illegal, first of all, that they were bused there from wherever they were from by the same leftists. And what they've done is they've come now, they're milked in with all these criminals and these hordes of people that have come to the southern border for, for a political maneuver by the left. If the left was really concerned about these people, they would have helped them fill out applications. They would have lobbied the government to try to get that process quicker, developed a better way to get people through the process of becoming a citizen and handing that to the president and saying, this is, we want to work with you on this. We want to help. No, it's not like that. This is just stagehand. This is all this is. This is just smoke and mirrors to make it to make the people on the left furious, thinking that the government and the border patrol are just throwing young babies and children and innocent people into cages and holding them there ext- for till the end of time. Nothing could be further from the truth. But she links this in there, and so does Business Insider. And she says that, uh, that, that this is something, uh, here we are focused on something so silly as a pizza parlor. Well, let me tell you, when I talk to Guy, it's not silly. It's his life. It's his family's life. I'm sure if this woman, if I all of a sudden said, you're not going back to work. You're not going back to work because I don't agree with you. So never can you have a penny for whatever you work for. And we're going to take whatever you have. And we're going to ruin your life and your livelihood of you and your family. I don't think she would think that's silly. I don't care if she makes minimum wage. She says that the president probably has something better to do, to spend his time on. I personally, having been trained by the federal government in many different agencies to defend against enemies of this country and enemies of freedom and to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, which is where our freedoms are bound in word and law. I know nothing more at this point in time more important than to defend and fight against the communist leftist movement. Nothing. ISIS, listen, we could end that in about two seconds. The rest of these, and that's just a political thing. The war on drugs, if it was thought through, we could end that very quickly, at least the violence part of it. But this, this is what is going to break this country if we don't stop it. And I can't think of anything more important, even at this level, than having the president's involvement. We are where we are because the government hasn't been involved enough in stopping this movement. If you think the military and these generals, if they were called upon to stop it, if you think that's what's going to happen, you're wrong. What I have seen as I've traveled this country, talked to people who are in the military still, as I meet police officers and watch them, how they react to this very ideology, this ideological takeover that's happening in this country. As I watch what's happening with them, we are at a point now where you cannot trust law enforcement or the military, the people that are in charge, and some of the people that, that are at the ground level, you cannot fully trust that they will do what's right. I spoke to an officer last night that was there. And it's sickening what's happening. I've talked to to NYPD officers that are getting out, retiring. Many of them don't want to retire. 
but many of them are because they don't know how it's going, what's going to happen if they do the right thing. They also know that their executives are leftist. Now, let me give you an example of this. I did the other day with the idiot from Fort Collins, the chief of police there. That's still growing, the tweet that I put out about him. I go and look at his Twitter page, which hasn't been used in forever, but he follows just a few people, one of which was James Comey. Listen to uh, the, this is um, Bend, Oregon, uh, the, the, the police chief of Bend. Listen to what he says. So here's what, let me lay it out for you. ICE went to go arrest some people who had warrants for their arrest, felony warrants. They went to go get them, and they're going to bring them to wherever they're going to take them. And, of course, because Oregon is full of these wackos, uh, they get out there and block the road. Now, one criticism for uh, ICE, you got to be smarter about this. I mean, you are putting, whoever these executives are, you're in making these decisions, you are putting ice agents at risk by doing it this way you've got to think differently you've got to think totally differently and getting these people out of there i don't care if you got to put them in old vws and get them out of there putting them on a bus and getting them out of there is a huge bus that screams ice is it's you're just gonna have to start working outside of the box i know that kills you but so the bend police chief uh gets up and he gets on, uh, on I don't know, it's, it looks like a wall. And this is what he has to say to the rioters. Remember, this is not a protest. I don't care what their local government says. These are people who are out there violating the law, shutting down roads, and preventing ICE agents from doing their job, which is protecting the nation, arresting felons. So just listen to the, um, listen to the police chief here. And thank you for coming out and supporting your community tonight and remaining peaceful and exercising. So his idea of peaceful is standing in the road and preventing law enforcement from doing their job. That's his idea of peaceful. See, this this is what I'm talking about. These are leftists. They were put in place. They got into place because they they are motivated not by law enforcement, not by uh, ensuring uh, public protection, not by doing the right thing. They are motivated by what the left is trying to do. And there is some harsh language in this, so just be warned. And exercising your First Amendment rights. Thank you for being here and remaining peaceful. Can you hear that? So he says, thank you for uh, your, you know, exercising your First Amendment rights and staying peaceful, even though they're standing in the middle of the road, preventing law enforcement from detaining, or they've already detained, but from taking these and surrounded the vehicle and keeping them from processing these individuals and getting them out of there, these felons. This is a police chief talking. Thank you for supporting your community and staying uh, peaceful and being together as a community. He sounds just as stupid, just as effeminate as the idiot from Fort Collins that I showed the other day. I felt kind of an obligation to come out here tonight and talk to everybody and give you some information. And my concern is, as you can see, the Bend Police Department has been here the whole day to support your safety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he's supporting their safety by keeping felons from being taken out by federal law enforcement we did not get involved in ice activities or immigration activities or but you are involved in it he is involved in it his department is involved in not preventing uh this riot from happening and from not allowing the other officers to do their job it's, this is just unbelievable how far this has gone immigration enforcement i think everybody knows that if you don't, I'm here to tell you again, we do not get involved in immigration enforcement. That's why we're... Okay, that's three times he said that in less than 30 seconds. We're not involved in this. Three times. So what I'm telling you right now, though, I, I want everyone to really hear. My information is that uh, there will be federal agents coming here, and they will ensure the safety of their uh, employees and the people here. 
So the federal government, he says, is going to be coming out there. They're going to be sending some agents out there, and they're they're going to ensure the safety of their employees. They're also ensuring the safety of the people who have been detained and arrested. Uh, but this guy, who's the chief of police, and he's sworn to protect the people in his uh, in his city, is totally failing. Totally failing at his job because he supports this leftist movement. The same exact people who tried to boycott patio pizza and guy and his business and his longevity of just cooking good pizza. It's the same people 3,000 miles away. Same people, same ideology. So, so I want you to be aware of this information. Such a freaking whiner. What does that mean? I'm trying to protect you right now to let you know that that you're I think lying that to us. Lying. You're lying. So, <laughs> gosh, they're saying, protect us, protect us. You're in the middle of the road, idiot. You're in the middle of the road and you're stopping law enforcement that's trying to protect you from doing their job. Meanwhile, this guy, it basically is instigating the whole thing because he's not stopping it. He's not getting people off. Listen, when law enforcement doesn't do their job, they can, in fact, be the instigators. It's as if they want to sit back and say, hey, nothing's going to happen to you if you break that window. You know, nothing's going to happen to you. Okay, we get it. You said it three times. You don't support ICE. So what are you saying? Do what you got to do? Because that's what it sounds like to me. But these idiots in the crowd don't even realize he's on their side. As a sheriff, you have rights over them, constitutional. This is the best. This is the best. He says, I'm going to play this little part back. He says, as the sheriff, as the sheriff, right? You have the constitutional rights. Listen, listen to him. Constitutionally. Rights over them. Here it is. You're lying to us. You're lying. As a sheriff, you have rights over them constitutionally. <laughs> As the sheriff, you have rights over them constitutionally. And then somebody says, he's not the sheriff. He's the chief. Here's his response. Where's the fucking sheriff? Like, Where's the effing sheriff then? That's what he says. A sheriff could fucking shut this down. I wanted everyone to have that information. Why are the So see, he gets down. Now he's getting down. He hands the megaphone back and he gets down. Why? Same thing happened to the mayor in Portland who tries to come out there and be a, and be a part of this movement. And then they get hammered because they are, in fact, uh, the people in charge. And they're not just just totally given over to the leftists and allowing the leftists to do what they want. Look, the same thing is happening with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The same thing. You know, they're not far enough to the left, but they don't see it. They don't even, these people, these radicals don't even realize that Kamala Harris is as far left as you can go. She just... You know, she just covers it up with some school, some cool talk, man. She sounds like a druggie. She is a druggie. She's also worthless as a, as an attorney general, worthless as a senator, a liar who says things that just absolutely aren't true. And her and Joe Biden, the stuff that they said to each other while they were debating, only to set that to the side and come out and run together shows you the reality of the character of who they are. It's the same thing here. This freaking guy, he goes on now. Now the, 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 the same police chief at Bend in Oregon comes out, and this is his, his press conference afterwards. And I'm telling you, he gives me the creeps so bad looking at him. There is, if you're a cop in Bend, Oregon, you should just quit and go somewhere else. You should just, or, or just, you know, stay on the job, get, get your money saved and then get out of there. Cause this guy, he looks like a serpent in uniform. Laws or to detain people based on immigration status. This is consistent with state law and with our Ben police policy. Again, another day, another interview. And here he is again, talking about how they don't support immigration and ICE. 
Around 1.07 p.m. today, Ben police arrived on scene and we arrived to allow for free speech and allow for a peaceful area for our community members to assemble. Which was the road, right? That's he, He's fine with that being the peaceful place where they assemble because it was blocking ICE from doing their job. And to provide life safety support. The Ben police are currently on site to protect life, proper, uh, protect life and safety of our community and are not there assisting the role of ICE. This is what it's come to, folks. And it hasn't been, uh, it's been gradual. It hasn't been like, like it just happened. This guy just, and the guy at Fort Collins, they didn't just get the job. The guy at Fort Collins was in Eglin, uh, Illinois before he went to, to, to Fort Collins. Is there any questions? As he smiles, he literally looks like somebody who just like a psychopath, somebody who just murdered somebody and is getting off on being interviewed by authorities. You ever watch these serial killers when they do the things that they do and then they get interviewed? They all they love the attention. That's this guy. Yeah, I'm not going to play any more of that. He's just worthless, worthless. And uh, again, you all are going to get what you asked for that out there that 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 don't stand up. You didn't vote for this guy, but let me trust me on this. Chiefs of police in most places is a political job. You don't just become chief of police. You get pulled up by the powers that be in politics. This guy is as far left as you can go. There's no doubt about that. Now, um, I'm going back through when, when I go through, um, drudge, right? Very, very rarely on Drudge now is there anything that is even remotely conservative. But there was one story today, and I, I really, to tell you the truth, I don't know the publication. It's called Commentary. Uh, I've been on TV with a couple of people who write for this, but I haven't looked at it enough to see if it's a joke or not, to tell you the truth. But uh, there is one story on here. Yes, this is a revolution. That's that's the name of it. It's by a guy named uh, Abe Greenwald. And it's all opinion. The whole thing is opinion. But the reality is, <clears throat> as this guy goes through and he uh, describes all this, he actually hits on a couple of points that are frighteningly relevant. Um. Uh, I'm just going to read a little bit of this. He says the great unraveling at first consisted of riots and looting under the pretense of seeking justice for the recently killed George Floyd. Now I'm going to break for a second and just say this. Okay. George Floyd was murdered. There's no doubt about it, but George Floyd, like the majority of people who end up getting killed by cops, whether it is a good shoot a bad shoot, or in this case, choking the guy out to death, Almost every single person is involved in resisting police or in a felony when they're killed. George Floyd was no different. He was not uh, an altar boy. George Floyd was not a good guy. He was a bad person with a huge rap sheet. And, uh, and as was the guy who, who killed him. He didn't have a rap sheet, but he kind of did because he was a bad cop. And the reason I point that out is because This entire movement or revolution has not been sparked by George Floyd's death, but it's used George Floyd's death and his murder as a way to push the violence forward, right? But they don't even talk about that anymore. Black Lives Matter doesn't even mention that. The leftists rarely mention George Floyd. They still use systemic racism as an excuse, but that's that's all it is. It's just an excuse so they can get out there and riot and try to tear down... um, the fabric of this nation, just like what I just talked about with these people blocking the road so that ICE couldn't remove felons. They don't really care about those people in there. It's not like they, I'm sure with these people being as violent and nasty as they are, that ICE is going after that. If they were just released into their community and those people killed somebody, the community is going to be like, well, why weren't they arrested? Why weren't they, why didn't you lock these people up? This is an outrage. It's just an excuse for the, for the left to move forward. That's it. So getting back to this, okay, pulling this story back up. Um, the anarchist occupation of a portion of Seattle and a rash of accusations, confessions, and dismissals of individuals who showed up, uh, showed insufficient fealty to the new anti-racist paradigm. At the time, extreme 
policy proposals such as defunding municipal police departments were subjects for popular discussion and debate. Continuing the article, everyday Americans swapped Black Lives Matter reading lists and strove, however misguidedly, to broaden their conception of racial inequality. He goes, this part is actually laid out quite well. Um, as of this writing, he's saying, Portland, Oregon has endured more than two months of straight anarchist violence directed at federal buildings and employees. In other cities, New York, Los Angeles, Richmond, Omaha, and Austin, to name a few, mob violence continues to erupt regularly, always connected to cries for justice and sometimes resulting in death. Accelerating the general disillusion, police forces have been successfully hobbled in response to the killing of George Floyd, and the resulting spike in murder and violence shows no signs of abating. All this is absolutely true. Now, what he says next is, you know, it's written in such a way that really does hit home um, because of the way that these mobs of people, which they really actually are, are acting. He goes on to say that all the while armchair lynch mobs have continued to claim the scalps of those who veer or merely stumble on the path to social justice enlightenment. And isn't that, see, that's where they turn on each other, these leftists. It is a full-time job of any American with a public presence to bow down before the identity cult. And this is a, a very interesting, interesting thing that he points out, that as for the public, 62% of all Americans, again, these are polls. I don't, you know, it's not like they went out and polled 100% of Americans, but according to the Cato Institute, 62% of all Americans now say they're afraid to voice their political views lest they be punished professionally. I mean, this is, I know people who have suffered for this. He goes on to say, leading media organizations, as they did from the start, lend their approval to all of that. And that's absolutely true. Now, listen, this, this goes on and on. It's a very long article. But what it's pointing out here is that there is, and I had a, a discussion with somebody a couple of days ago that is a retired police officer. And it was very interesting because I just read this article today and we had the same exact discussion the other day about this culture that is happening and how and what is actually occurring. And it's interesting because it, as the, it, it goes on throughout this, uh, this article, obviously uh, Abe Greenwald and is, and I probably should try to reach out to him and have him on the show. This would be a great interview. He's obviously seen what is happening and he sees it clearly. But from a tactical perspective, I don't know if, if Abe Greenwald or any, any of these other people out there that, that have not seen the way that you actually uh, plan war, plan battles, uh, use tactics in order to, to identify the enemy, find their vulnerabilities, exploit those vulnerabilities, and then uh, just basically break them down. Most people don't understand how that works. And it's, I wouldn't, call it a science although it is really a, a science in how you do that but it's a skill set it's a skill that you learn and it's a tactical skill strategic skill set has to do with seeing the overall picture can your tactics can your battles and your battle plan maneuver you to a point where you are overall the winner or overall in control if you do not have a good strategic picture, your tactics and your battles that you either wage or that are waged upon you will be in vain. You have That's why when you look at the war on terror, when you look at the war on drugs, when you look at the war on immigration, you don't see a strategic uh, uh, success because they don't have a strategic outlook. They won't even name the enemy, for goodness sakes, when it comes to the war on terror which is fundamental Islam. They won't even name it. But when you look, for instance, when you look at equal rights, for instance, you know, you, and you say, well, we have, to, we had to get to a point where women could vote, where uh, people of all colors are accepted and they, they are absolutely under the protection of the bill of rights and the constitution. You know, we, that was a strategic look at or picture of what was needed and tactically people maneuvered throughout history to get to that point but there is no from from those of us that are seeing what's coming 
There is no strategic plan to defeat what's happening. But there is, which means the tactics are going to be worthless. But when you flip it around, those that are bringing the communist leftist movement to this nation and around the world have a strategic plan. They have an objective and they are using their tactics, which they have, they have grown and honed well over a hundred years. A hundred years is nothing. This stuff has been going on. But now because of technology, it's even easier because by and large, this is the thing. This is why I give you these taskings every day before I start the show, because I'm trying to get you to think and act and do because what they count on and why social media and computers and, and technology, while it is great for all of us, it is also an Achilles heel. They know they, by they, I mean the people who were doing the planning on the left, they know that you probably can't even read a map. You don't even know where to get a map. You don't even know how to communicate with somebody if your phone breaks because you probably don't have their phone number uh, memorized. How many of you have your, the, your mom's phone number memorized? Or your girlfriends or your boyfriends or the local police precinct? If the phone goes down, do you even know where your local police precinct is? Do you even know how to get somewhere to where you could get food or water? Most of you do not. They know these things. They know that you are, you have been chained to the couch. You have been chained to your house. You have been chained to your job and your pension. And so you will sit there and do nothing. They know this. As I read through this article, it, it just reflected on this conversation that I had just two days ago. How, and this is really, this is the biggest thing. I'm going to mention this at the, at the end of this uh, show as well, so you'll take this away with you. But the fight now that we see in social media and in opinion is not just left and right. It's neighbor to neighbor. And unlike anything that has ever happened in this nation before, even the Civil War, the Civil War had clearly defined lines. Now, you don't know what your neighbor thinks. Hell, you don't even know what the person that you've known for 20, 30 years thinks. You would be surprised. You may have been in the military with people and think, well, I know they're on our side. I can count on them. You may be sadly mistaken. And the war that is occurring right now, as we speak, is neighbor to neighbor, which means if we ever do go to something where it is an armed conflict, it is going to be door to door. There will be pockets just like there is now in cities and in populated areas where there'll be a fight, but you won't know who to, if you've ever watched The Walking Dead, it's going to be very similar, except it's going to be The Walking Alive. You won't know who to trust. That's the one thing they got out of that, the, the Walking Dead, that they got correct, which was written by very liberal people, and you can see it all through it. Screams liberal all through it. Leftists, not even liberal, just leftists. But the one thing that they did get right is that the zombies were really not the most dangerous thing there. It was the people that were alive, that wanted power, that wanted to live. They were the most dangerous. And, and it's... It's always been interesting to me how so many people will follow a madman. In fact, I'm going to take a break for a second. I'm going to tell you about an experiment that I've mentioned before on this show that Dr. Stanley Milgram did in 1969. But it's, I want you to understand what this is all about. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Jonathan Gillum. I just want to tell you real quick about my safety system. And maybe you've heard and maybe you haven't heard about it. It's based on the book, Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival. Now, Sheep No More is a book that shows you how attackers look at you, how they systematically look at your vulnerabilities so that they can build a plan of attack, the avenues of approach, the vulnerabilities that they can manipulate. All of that is systematic and shared by most attackers, and you can look at yourself with that actual mindset. The book also shows you how to take that information that you'll gain by looking at yourself like that and putting it into defensive plans. 
There are two workbooks that you can also get. Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival Workbook Number 1, which is the target package or threat assessment workbook where you actually do the threat assessments on yourself, your business, your school, your church, etc. And then the defense assessment workbook number two, which allows you to take that information and transpose it into real defenses for your life, your business, your church, your school, everything. Along with that, if you have children, The Adventures of Teen Little Bigs, a parent's book for children. Now that is a book of all pictures that Danielle Kreiner and I work together, she's an amazing artist, to build pictures that have security and awareness and communication built into them. Now there's no words, it's pictures for children, but you can go to teamlittlebigs.com where the lesson plans are, download those, give the book to the child, and then teach them safety, awareness, and communication skills. Go get them all, Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival, it's two workbooks, and the adventures of Teen Little Bigs, a parent's book for children. And let's get back to the show. All right. Now, real quick, I just want to tell you about uh, Dr. Stanley Milgram. And I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again because it plays right into what you're seeing here, okay? Basically, it's this. Uh, The doctor was trying to find out why Germans would have uh, followed Hitler and why they would have allowed this stuff, these atrocities to happen uh, during World War II. So what he did was he took actors and he put an actor in a room, right? And in that room, they were strapped to a chair where they looked like they could be electrocuted. Then you would have, uh, he put out art- articles in, in uh, the school papers to have people volunteer um, as uh, aides to come in with the, and help assist with this experiment. Of course, Dr. Milgram would have his lab coat on and he, they would come in there and these are volunteers, not actors. The volunteers did not know what was happening. And he would set them in front of a control panel And he would tell them, I'm going to ask a question of this person in the other room. And when they get it wrong, you are to flip this switch and initiate a shock. And for every question that they get wrong after that, you're to turn this dial uh, that will increase the shock. And that went from zero to XXX, which was just dead, right? And it had all these different levels of shock in between. So the people would literally sit there in some cases would defecate on themselves or urinate on themselves or pass out because they knew they were involved in something that was not good, but they were being told that their grades depended upon this for extra credit or whatever it was. So they would sit there and the the scary part about this is that well over 50% of the people that volunteered for this knowingly took the actor in the other room. They didn't know that was an actor and they thought they were actually dying, but would take them to death. But what was remarkable about this, so that means that over 50% of the people, all these people who call themselves leftists or call themselves liberals that are out there that, and you got to be careful if you're conservative as well, because you can be convinced to do things that we don't need to do. So, there's people on the left that are going to be convinced to take part in things, which they already are that ethically are not right. And they're convincing themselves that it is, but here's the scary part about all of this. You can have even some of the most nasty liberals. And if you take them and you put them and you say, it is your duty to show up at this riot. And when they think, see things happening, like bricks mysteriously laid out and people tell them, yeah, pick up a brick and go break that window. They're not going to do it because they, uh, they don't want to take part in something that's, that's that violent. Okay. There's going to be people that there's going to be people that do according to Stanley Milgram's experiment, over 50% of the people that you push out there ideologically will take part in this, but there'll be people that won't. But here's where the striking part of this experiment that most people don't talk about lies in that when he took those volunteers and he removed them from in front of that panel and he said, I'm going to ask the person in this other room. Now, he put another actor sitting in front of the control panel 
And he said, I'm going to ask the person in the other room a series of questions. And when they get it wrong, I want you, the volunteer, to tell the person sitting at this control panel to shock that guy in the other room. And the behavior and the response by the by these volunteers completely changed. They didn't defecate on themselves. Nobody passed out or urinated on themselves. They didn't protest. They told the person in front of the keyboard or in front of the, uh, the control panel, shock that person. They would ask them another question and the volunteer and they would get it wrong. And the volunteer would say, increase the uh, voltage and shock them again because they weren't the ones shocking them. And they were being told to do that by the doctor. So this is the scary part about all this stuff that is happening is that when you remove the actual participation by the leftist and they sit back and watch what's occurring on TV, they will still defend it. And they will defend somebody like Kamala Harris, like Joe Biden. They will defend the defaming of the president, President Trump, and they will believe what's being said because they are not the person in front that's actually going to battle. They are the person that's removed and now supporting that person and telling them, no, 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 you, you shock them. It's, it, it's your job. You do it. And they are in full support. They take all the conscious out of it. Remember, th there's estimates here between, between three and four out of five people in the world have psychopathic tendencies. And I would say, I don't know the exact number, okay? But I would say the vast majority of human beings alive today that have social media have narcissistic tendencies. Now, you got to remember, we talked about this before. Um, when you look at narcissism and you look at uh, the, for instance, the uh, the heroic complex that these people have where they're they're they think that they are responsible for the good for the good deed being done in the world those are the people that will probably go out there and act but they're also the people that will sit back because they don't have the guts to actually go forward and do stuff they will sit back and support they'll send money in they'll argue with other people on social media saying no 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 those are not riots those are protests or in the case of like what's happening uh, what happened in Bend Oregon or or even better what happened in Fort Collins where people supporting law enforcement showed up law enforcement this is a good example people supporting law enforcement back the blue rally they show up to march in support of law enforcement and antifa dressed in black with faces covered knowingly show up to start a fight and people support it because they're not there, because they're not the ones fighting. And so then they go on the blogs, they support the chief of police, they go on Twitter, and they say that, you know, that uh, what those, what those uh, conservatives or the people who are backing the police, what they did was not right. They should, it doesn't matter if they have a back to blue shirt on, they should not be fighting and beating people up. All the while, they were just responding to the threat that was posed upon them. You see, this, this, Dr. Stanley Milgram nailed it years ago without even realizing what he was doing. This is the basis, even that revolution that uh, Abe Greenwald wrote about there in that article that I read earlier, part of it. I don't know if they realize this, that the fact is people ideologically will sit back and allow things to happen and even support it if they don't have to get into the fight. So when I said earlier that the fight is neighbor to neighbor, door to door, it is literally happening behind the door right now. Literally, the most dangerous thing that's occurring right now is that people are being hoodwinked and they believe it so passionately that they will send money and support and, and actually vote for people who are trying to destroy this country and put, actually take away from their freedoms destroy businesses, destroy cities, and they will still support it. Because they've been lied to and because they aren't in the fight. If you took those same people and you literally put them out there and showed them the nonsense. I told you, I've known people who have gone to these police rallies for the first time, never done anything, liberal their whole life, and they see what occurs with Black Lives Matter. They see the violence. They see them cursing children out that have a police shirt on and flipping people off and throwing things at elderly people. They see it. And when you, do, when you take them out there, it changes them. 
they realize they're not on the wrong side. Just like the people that were the, the volunteers that actually sat in the control panel and had to flip the switch, they couldn't handle it. But you remove them from it and they will support it because somebody else is doing those unethical things, not them. And and their unethical behavior, it really is, uh, it, it, is uh, it has a purpose is what they'll say. This is, this is where the revolution is happening. It's through inaction by the people on the right, by not being able, not, not having any dialogue, not realizing how fast this stuff is going. And it's happening on the left because people are ideologically bent. They don't understand what is being, they don't understand the truth about this movement. They don't understand what they're actually going to and what they have right now. And they're, they are actually participating, some of them on the ground forcefully, trying to burn buildings down with law enforcement officers in it, destroying cities, or they're sitting back and offering money to Black Lives Matter, offering money to these leftist organizations, supporting people like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, and supporting them all the while. Their plan is to destroy this country. Now, as I mentioned earlier about this civil war, in 1969, Dr. Stanley Milgram did an experiment that showed why people would follow a madman like Hitler and support what was going on. He showed that when you take people and put them in an unethical position, whether they believe ideologically or not, but they're forced to do things that are deadly, they will just fall apart. 50% or more will fall apart. But when you remove those people, one position from actually doing the act, they will support what's going upwards of 90% if they believe in it ideologically. That's what's happening now with the left. They don't understand that the Constitution is being destroyed. They don't understand what's happening in the cities where these riots are occurring. They don't get it. But here's what they will get. They're going to reap the fury of the communist movement if they don't stop. I'm Jonathan Gillum. This is The Experts. The truce has arrived. Peace and war out of here.